Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Chapel. It is good to be here with you in uh, spirit, if not technology or what have you. It's, uh, I just love doing church. I, I miss you guys. I, I miss seeing your faces and giving you hugs and shaking your hands, but we, uh, we know that we'll be together again soon, hopefully soon. So uh, with that in mind, God gives us this greeting, grace and peace to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let's join our voices together today and sing along if you know the words. We're going to start with just a closer walk with thee. They say so much more than I can say. Well, today we're going to be talking about the disciples on the road to, to Emmaus, so I thought just a closer walk with thee. And since Jesus was telling them the story, I love to tell the story. So let's sing together, I love to tell the story. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus found us where we were and how Jesus walks with us day by day. Today we're going to hear the story of a couple of disciples on the road to Emmaus. And I'm going to tell the story first and then I will have a prayer and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Here in Luke chapter, chapter, my, my eyes, I don't know if any of you are having this problem, but I'm having more and more trouble seeing up close. But I'm, I'm getting used to it. Sometimes I have to adjust. We're in Luke 24, starting in chapter 13. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad, and then one of them named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And, and they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him to, up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early this, this morning, in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him to strongly say, Stay with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, and blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. And when, and when he did, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn with us, within us while, we while, we talked to us while they talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, those who were with him, gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning that, that teaches us more and more about you. Lord, I pray that we will see together today, Lord, just the truth of your scriptures and how it impacts our hearts and impacts our lives. Help us to see 
the true and living Christ, the one Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord and Savior. Help us to see him today. We thank you for this time we have together, Lord God, and I pray that you will bless it and multiply your word as it goes forth today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, only Luke records this story. Not a word from Matthew or Mark or John. And after reading it, the story leaves you, I think, it leaves me anyways, with more questions than answers. Yet, as I studied the story of the Emmaus Road, I sensed that I was walking on holy ground. The story that I'm referring to is our gospel text shared by Luke. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. What same day is Dr. Luke referring to? Looking back to the beginning of the chapter, that same day is the day Christians call Easter Sunday. And as we know, Jesus was crucified on Friday, that same day Luke speaks of was the day that the stone sealing the tomb was rolled away. It says in 5 and 6, two angels share the glorious news earlier that same day. Remember the words, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. It is that same day, according to Luke, that two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. Who does the two of them refer to? Well, according to Luke, the women who had heard the glorious testimonies from the angels gave a report, quote, to the eleven and to all the others. Friends, Jesus had many more disciples than just the twelve. Luke records at the beginning of the book of Acts that there were about 120 followers of Jesus. The two walking on the road to Emmaus were just two of them. They were two disciples of Jesus. One of the disciples is identified in our text as Cleopas. Who was this Cleopas? Asebius, a bishop and an early 4th century scholar, was convinced that Cleopas was the brother of Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, and therefore the uncle of Jesus. Some are convinced that Cleopas is the same as Cleopas, mentioned by John. In John's Gospel we read, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. If Cleopas and Cleopas are the same, then Cleopas' wife was one of the holy women who followed Jesus. She was present at the cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Mary's sister, and with Mary Magdalene. She may also have been among the group of women at the tomb who heard the glorious report from the angels. He is not here. He is risen. That conclusion seems to be supported by a comment that Cleopas makes later in, the, in our text when he says, Some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels and who said that he was alive. Perhaps you're wondering about, like me, you're wondering about the other unnamed disciple of Cleopas. Who was he? Well, we really don't know. Some have suggested that it was Matthias, the one who would later become the 13th disciple, replacing Judas as one of the 12. But Dr. Luke doesn't give us that information at all. Yet, there is one interesting piece of information that Luke does provide. In our text, the two disciples are strongly urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. What can we learn from that comment? They say, stay with us. Right? Perhaps these two disciples were related, or at least living in the same place, and that's certainly possible. Much like, much like the related brothers Peter and Andrew, or James and John, perhaps Cleopas it was Cleopas and his brother, or perhaps it was a father and son. Apparently they were staying in the same house, and they were both disciples of Jesus. The truth is we really don't know very much about these two individuals. Cleopas could be Cleopas. But we're not sure. We don't know the identity of the other disciple. And Emmaus, where is Emmaus? Unfortunately, we don't know that either. Emmaus was not a city with walls like Bethlehem or Jerusalem. Emmaus was referred to in the Greek as a village, a small settlement. And this is the only place in scripture where Emmaus is mentioned. And archaeologists are, are not sure of its location. 
Though the text tells us that it was about 60 stadia from Jerusalem, about seven to eight miles on a winding road. That distance is important for us because it lets us know how long the disciples were walking on the road. It also gives us a clue as to when they began their journey. How long would it take to walk seven or eight miles? Well, about two hours at normal walking speed, but probably the walk to Emmaus took longer. They were talking to each other as they walked along the way. And Luke tells us that when they arrived in Emmaus, it was already dusk. The sun sets in that region about 6.30 in the evening. So we can infer from some, with some confidence that these two disciples left Jerusalem in the early afternoon. They had heard a report from our women earlier that day, and they knew they were heading home to their small village of Emmaus. Apparently, they had not heard the testimony of Mary Magdalene, who met with Jesus near the garden tomb. So these two disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus, talking about the events of the past few days. And this is where the story takes an interesting turn. Look at me once again at Luke's account, with me once again at Luke's account. They were walking with each other about everything that had happened. They had talked and discussed these things with each other. Jesus himself came up and walked with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Jesus, Jesus, the risen Lord, catches up to them on the road. But notice, they were kept from recognizing him. What does that mean? Did Jesus look different after the resurrection? You know, I don't think so, because the other disciples recognized him instantly. So what's going on here? It says they were kept from recognizing him. Apparently, what's happening is not natural. Something supernatural is taking place. Listen carefully to the rest of the story, and I think you will see why they were kept from immediately recognizing Jesus. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still and their faces were downcast. You get the impression that they were almost speechless, shocked, like, where have you been? You know, I've been witness to a few momentous historical events in my time, in my time, and it's hard to find somebody who doesn't know about those events. And here these guys are walking along the road, and you haven't heard? Right? That Cleopas expresses his thoughts and words. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem, and don't you know the things that have happened there since these days? You can pick up a little amazement in Cleopas' voice. But Jesus coaches Cleopas to share his thoughts. What things? Jesus asked. Hear their response. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people, the chief priests and our rulers, handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. And they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. What do you hear in that story? You hear the testimony, right? You hear their testimony. You hear disappointment. You hear discouragement. You hear doubt. Cleopas calls Jesus a prophet, powerful in word and deed. Yet he does not call Jesus Messiah. And Cleopas does not say the women saw angels who said Jesus was alive. He does, but rather, they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. You hear the difference in that? Cleopas and the unnamed disciple were not walking along the road to Emmaus rejoicing that Jesus the Messiah, he is risen from the dead. They are disappointed. They're discouraged and they're doubting. You could hear it in their words. We had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. What happened when God does something? What happens when God does something you weren't expecting? Or doesn't do something that you wanted him to do? Or when life just feels a bit unfair? Some, like those two disciples, walk away from Jerusalem. Some stop going to church regularly or at all. 
but many of us are a little, I like that little boy who was so upset that he would not sit and kept walking around in the classroom. The teacher finally managed to get him to sit down in his chair and he scowled up at her and said, I may be sitting on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. Some, although outwardly still they come to church, inwardly they have walked away from Jerusalem. They are seven miles up the road at Emmaus. Some days life feels like that Friday when Jesus died and was laid in the tomb. And everything seems dark and dim and all hope in the world is gone. You're discouraged, you're doubting, you're disappointed. But as Tony Campolo says, it's Friday now. Seven days to come. So how does Jesus respond? He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter his glory? Why didn't Jesus just say, hey, it's me, guys, it's me, Jesus? Surprise, I'm risen from the dead. For the same reason that disciples were kept from recognizing him at first. Jesus has something very important to share with and to teach them. It's interesting, before I became a chaplain in the army, I was a medic in the army. For most of my army career, I was a medic. For 15 of those years, I was a medic. It's only six, a chaplain. But for, for, for a large part of those 15 years, I was studying to be a pastor. And so I could kind of sneak up on people, right? And, that, and, I, and I knew a lot about scripture because I'm going to school for that. And I could have great conversations because they didn't see me coming. Now people see me coming. And they, and they tailor their words to what they see. And they don't listen with their hearts, right? They listen with their eyes. But these folks didn't recognize Jesus, and I think for a purpose, so they could listen with their hearts. Jesus had something very important to share and to teach them. In fact, in my opinion, the most important Bible study that was ever given was given on that road to Emmaus. What was the content of that Bible study? And at the beginning, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Man, to have been there, to hear that description of him, Jesus telling, telling his disciples from the beginning where he is in the Old Testament. Don't you wish you could have been there? Beginning with Moses, and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. So what happened to them? They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? What do these words mean to you? Were not our hearts burning within us? Have you ever sat and listened to a sermon or, or a speech, and as somebody's saying it, you think to yourself, wait, did I... Did he, did I, I think I, I thought that thought before he said it, right? I know, I believe that before he even said it. Did, I, did he say that or did I say that? He just said what I was thinking. And as Jesus opened the scriptures, their hearts already knew who he was, and they saw it coming as he unfolded it, right? They were under conviction. They seemed that they were uncovering a sacred treasure. They sensed that they were walking on holy ground. Before Jesus met with them on the road, their fire was dying and it was going out. Now their hearts were burning within them. Friends, that's my prayer for each of you and for me, that our hearts would burn within us as, we, as the truth of Jesus Christ is revealed to our hearts, that it would ignite that flame within us. And as Jesus broke the bread, the two disciples their, says their eyes were open and they recognized him. Was it the way that Jesus broke the bread? Or did they maybe see, see the nail prints in his hands when he finally broke the bread? Or was, it's, was it now God's anointed time for the veil to be finally lifted? We're not sure. But this much is certain. When Jesus broke that bread when, and gave thanks to God and gave it to them, they recognized him. And then something supernatural happened. Jesus disappeared right from their sight. They would see him again in the upper room after, that they, after they had hurried back the seven or eight miles to Jerusalem, this time in the dark. Right? That day's journey for those two disciples was a combined distance of almost 
two-thirds of a marathon, but they were excited. I imagine that trip back didn't take as long as the trip there. Their hearts were burning, it says burning, within them. Luke records that when they found where the eleven were assembled, the two told what, they had, ha what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them. And when he broke, when he broke the bread, Friends, it's the joyful experience when a person first recognizes Jesus for who he really is. Not just a prophet, powerful in word and deed, but as a Messiah, as a Savior. And not just our Savior, not just my Savior, but the Savior of the whole world. And your personal Savior. Cleopas and the unnamed disciple experienced that joy when they recognized Jesus as more than just a prophet. More than they knew or expected him to be. He was their Messiah. He was their Savior. He was their risen Lord. They were filled with excitement, and their hearts overflowed with joy. Friends, do you know him as your Messiah, as your Savior, as your Lord? We all walk our own road to Emmaus. At times we're hurting, and we're discouraged, and we're in search of answers, maybe walking around disappointed. Maybe your fire and your joy are fading and almost going out. Yet when you travel your Emmaus road, be assured that Jesus is right there with you. Turn to him and seek his face. Look for that moment when you, that fire within you is renewed again as you recognize your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's an um, old hymn that I like to sing, and it might be new to you, but uh, I, I want to sing that um, with you today. Um, and I'll sing it, Jim and I can sing it together first, and maybe you'll join in uh, the second time around. It's called, um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, or Open Our Eyes, Lord, rather. going through a time of doubt and discouragement, right? It may be with all of these rumors going on that your spirits have, have gone down and maybe it feels like your fire is going out. But Sunday's coming, right? Sunday's coming. We're only a couple weeks away from Easter where we celebrate the risen Lord, right? I hesitated to do a, a, a sermon on Jesus risen because, hey, you can't say anything about that before it comes. But there's so much to say. I thought I might want to get a head start. This is my head start. Sunday's coming. It might be Friday, but Sunday is right around the corner. And before Jesus met with the Emmaus travelers on the road, their fire was going out. But what happened after? Their hearts were burning within them, it says. And that's my prayer for you, that each day be filled to overflowing with the joy of the Lord, that your hearts would burn within you, that you your life would be a witness that Sunday is coming, that Jesus Christ is risen and risen indeed. Let's pray together in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll be back again on Monday at 10 o'clock for devotion.